Now, I would like to ask everyone in the audience a simple question. Who here could tell me who this man is? Let me guess. No one knows, correct? Well, you've seen him before. I can promise you that. But the question is, why didn't you remember it? That I can answer for you. It's because it didn't catch your interest. After a test, you wiped it from your memory, never to think of again. We're all guilty of that because it works. We get an A, then never have to think of it again. But is that what we want our schools to be? A place to see if you remember useless facts for a few hours? I argue not. I think that we need to make a lasting impact. And the way we do that is going straight to the source of a problem, catching the interest of someone to store it in their memory. That is the key to education, and I believe I have the solution to break the lock. So, as you can see on the board, there's a picture of a bunch of animated teenage boys. I know, probably not that impressive. Well, this is a show called Hitalia. Without going into too much detail, every one of these people is a personification of a country. Now, I can tell you that through this show, I have learned the entire history of the War of Austrian Succession, and I didn't even realize what was happening until I was laughing at Britain's abandonment of the Austrians. I had no clue what Prussia was until I saw the character. This may seem pointless, but please hear me out. This is what catches people's attentions. Jokes and bright colors and humans and violence and weird songs. Now, no, I'm not saying we show this exact program. It's inaccurate in certain areas as well as being TV 14, but I feel like this is a step in the right direction. Much like when making a documentary, entertainment is the priority, then you go for knowledge. As my old teacher said, if you go in expecting to learn something, nothing will happen. Go in expecting to have fun, you'll remember everything. I think that the same applies here. So teachers, do more funny skits and juvenile jokes, because we'll remember it better than any old fact in a textbook. Second is based off of this award-winning book, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, a brilliant pioneer in the memory profession. In this book, the author explains in great detail how memory works and what we can do to improve it. And I think that we, as a community, should begin to use some of his recommendations stated in the program, such as the theory that he explained that if you show something once without the context and once with the context, people remember it better. For example, let's say we need to remember who Jerry Handler is. So what we do is mention Jerry's name earlier in the book, just his name, maybe his age, nothing else. Then, units later, when we learn more about his history, his life, his accomplishments, a little ping will go off in a student's head, and suddenly, it becomes a game of Clue. Pile on the evidence and see what you can solve. Writers use this method all the time. For example, in The Hunger Games, Katniss mentions Foxface well before she goes skipping her way to the career pile. Or in Quarantine, Zachary is introduced as leader of the geeks weeks before he tries to kill the protagonist. Thanks to that, we remember these characters much better than if we'd only seen them skipping their way to the career pile or going off the deep end, respectively. We become invested, and that makes us want to remember it. It makes learning these people, these things, like a game of Clue. It becomes fun. Now, many will say that students should just suck it up and learn the old-fashioned way, with hard work and elbow grease. After all, their parents got out of school just fine without having all these fancy technology and television shows. And that, I would argue, is true. Back in the days when books were the only media available, it only made sense to use them. But now, in a modern generation, why not take advantage? That's like telling someone they shouldn't use a car because people in the 18th century got along without them. We also shouldn't be learning reading, writing, math, science, or anything because humans existed well before all those things were invented. And that's not to mention, there's just more to learn in the modern era. In government class, we have to memorize court cases that happened as recent as 2000. And while I personally don't have a problem with it, thanks to my love of law, I can only imagine what that must be like to someone who feels the same way about that as I do math. There's just more to learn in history as well, with the recent years of terrorism and wars in the Middle East, all having to be memorized, absorbed, and analyzed. Even in science and math, children are expected to learn at an accelerated pace. So is it really fair to expect the new generation to learn all this without being allowed to use the most modern technology? I say not. So, in conclusion, the problem of education is not that kids are lazy. It's not that the material is too hard. It is the way it is presented does not catch a person's interest. With a few tweaks to the system, students can get A's and actually remember what they learned as well. 
So bring in more Italian game theory and Kahoot. Take us out to the ball game to teach us transfer of energy. And have us act out that beautiful monologue in The Giver. Turn any old boring lesson into a game. Because in the end, everyone will win. Thank you for your time.